Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of posing your quarter front and side views. Um, so I'm going to reactivate over here my ref to be able to see everything uh, from my character. So I may have to move uh, this entire part just a little bit here. So you can go ahead and take um, most of the body. We don't want to grab the head because the head is pretty much positioned where it should be. So I'm going to take the level just underneath, move that around a bit and try to match it about here. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with the neck and position that a little bit more to this side. Now, as we can see, the torso is not quite matching the neck and the neck should be a little bit wider so I can uh, go and scale that up or if you've put a deformer around it, you can do that as well. So we're going to try to center it with the rest of the body and perhaps make a slight rotation. And we can use the torso to kind of match the rest of the curve over here. So I'm going to grab my deformation, move it over here, and just try to make it follow the curve about as much as it can. If we want at this point, we can probably um, move the transparency up or down a little bit just to kind of see where this line should be falling. Should actually be a little bit lower. And make that about here. And we'll want, of course, the hips to follow with the rest. Um, so if you're not quite sure where the hips are going to fall, on the rest of the body. Maybe we want to position the arms first uh, just to kind of make sure that uh, we position them properly and then after that we can always deactivate them. Um, so for the arm, we're gonna have to bring the arm in front of the body because right now if I go up the hierarchy and move it, we see that it kind of disappears behind the body. So we're gonna need to bring that above in Z depth. So you can bring it forward using Alt and pressing the down arrow to bring it to the front. Uh, now when I do this, it actually brings my arm above my ref uh, because my ref was set to zero position in Z depth. We can actually bring that one one level to the top as well just to make sure that it stays in front. There we go. All right, so we're posing the arm to about the same position as the other one should be. Um, so remember what I was saying, that you kind of have pieces that change to a different size here. Um, so we are going to want to adjust those to make sure that it matches the new position. Um, so I can activate uh, the deformation on here if you set a curve deformer So we can actually activate the deformation on here, show selected deformers, and from there we'll be able to use the different positions. I want to try to keep the pivot point again centered through all this, so maybe in the center of my shape before I start modifying the different poses of my deformers, just to make sure that when I select the full arm, the pivot is about at the center and not offset to one of the sides. So same thing with this one here. So what's a nice thing about this is with the arm, I can actually select all three of my points. And if I want to move all three at the same time, so for instance, scale them up, I can use this little tool here, show manipulator, and position the pivot point about where my original pivot point is and I can resize evenly those points right here. So if I want to size them up evenly I can hold down alt and scale them. So good way to position them by uh, sizing them from the center position and I can then adjust those beziers. Uh, if it's not exactly positioned at the center uh, what's going to happen is your pivot point here is going to be offset 
it's not fully dramatic when you do a 360 these things are meant to happen but ideally I try to uh, keep the arm to have about the middle position here on the rest of the arm so we're gonna have to scale this one as well anyways so let's go ahead and just move this to the side and make sure that we follow the line as close as possible I'm going to adjust the sleeve as well I can move that just a bit and we have these little pieces of hair we can move either individually but again we select the bulk of the movement first and then go into smaller details and now we have the arm which we can come and move a little bit more centered and let's change our deformation positions so that they match up nicely. And we want to bring this in just a little bit to make sure that the hand is nicely connected to my shape, just like so. So at this point, let's try turning off the ref just to make sure that our arm has a nice and smooth curve. Right now there's a little bit of a crease over on each side, but let's just try to do a nice little match up for these. And same thing over on this side. And we can turn off our deformation and that looks nice and smooth. Um, for the hand, you can see we have a different hand position over here. Um, so we'll see in another video how we can adjust that. For now, let's just keep the arm as it is. I'm pretty happy with the position that it has. So now what I can do is go over to the side here and let's just deactivate all the drawing nodes for the arm so that we can focus strictly on the positioning of the torso. All right. Let's reactivate our ref here. So over here on the torso, I have different pieces. I want to, again, position the bulk first. So let's just go and uh, maybe reposition slightly our torso right now. I have, I believe I had the wrong piece selected. All right, so let's grab the torso, maybe reposition it over a little bit more to the side so that it's centered and use our deformer to position in the right place. So since this is behind the arm, you kind of have to guess. Sometimes designers will uh, try to make sure that you at least know where these pieces are. If they design directly in harmony, it's always nice to have different layers. So have the arm on a single layer, for instance, to be able to see where exactly this line should fall. It should merge nicely into the hips right here. So either we adjust the hips, either we adjust the torso, or we adjust a little bit of both. All right, so let's turn off the other arm too for now, just so we can see exactly where this torso is ending. Right now it's a little bit difficult to see. We are still on our quarter front pose and turning this on. Yep, so it needs to be much wider over on this side and a little bit more over here. So the little pieces of hair look pretty similar, so we can just select all three of them, again using the fluff master right here. So the top pet controlling all three pieces of hair. And I'll just Position those over here. If they were to move individually, then I would uh, adjust each one. Um, but right now they're pretty much the same over on this one. So we'll just leave it as it is. The vest is then moving over to the side. So we can, again, take that part, move it over to about the position uh, that's gonna be closest. And then we can adjust using the deformation. I'm going to put that in here, rearrange 
those points a little bit. And that seems about right. There's slight differences in multiple places. So if you wanted at this point to kind of change to have the deformation applying to the line as well, uh, this is something that we saw in the previous video. Um, right now we did a simple version of this one, but it could be done. All right, moving on to the second part of the vest. We'll bring that one again over on this side. I may want to skew that to kind of match the position over here. And that's pretty close to what we want. So, so we can go and find our deformation over here on this side and then simply adjust the orientation of our shape over here. So the deformation was not exactly positioned to accommodate this sort of movement. So perhaps we would want to edit it a little bit. Might be good at this point to go and find this over here. So all part of adapting as we go. You may want to go and throw down a display at this point if you need to edit your deformation. And let's go into display two, making sure we have all of that info. And perhaps I'll go and throw that over here um, without affecting the line too much. So let's try it out. We want to go back to our main display. Keep in mind that this is going to be interpolated. So if the line breaks, it will break along the way. Um, we can always, of course, fix that a little bit later on, but ideally we don't have to do um, too many fixes on that end. So again, having the line connecting differently uh, to the deformation at this point, having the line also on a deformation could be a good idea for this kind of situation. So all part of adapting the rig as you go um, for the different things that you encounter. Um, so we are finishing up here with the upper body by positioning the belly. So again, positioning it real quick over here. We'll be having uh, the position over here kind of changing as if it were overlapping with the part of the leg. So I can go and move that over here on this side. This is probably going to get a little bit thinner over here. We want to follow the curve at the top and at the bottom here. Um, this one is already pretty much all right. And from this point, we want to position the hips. So the hips, which are over here, I'm gonna position the core of the hips first. So let's just go and grab those, move them to the side a little bit, kind of match up what we have here and then we adjust. We'll do the same over on the other side. We need those legs to connect properly to the torso. We want to have that as well with a nice smooth connection into the rest of the body. All right, so now that we have this one, we want to position the legs. I'm gonna bring the legs over and position those. We would position those in the same way that we did the arms. Bring those about to the center over here. We can see that these get a little bit wider too, fattening him up a little bit as we go from one view to the other. Um, so now that they're positioned, let's go ahead and um, so now that they're positioned, let's go ahead and click on our leg here and reposition that using our envelope. Very nice for creating uh, little changes of volume. There we go. And same thing for this one. We'll go ahead into the other leg and show the deformation. So again, we can select all three of them, have the pivot about in the center, and holding down Alt, we'll scale 
all three of those at the same time, adjusting little things afterwards. Alrighty, positioning that. You can position the leg as well. If you have an envelope around that leg, we'll start by rotating it and make sure that you grab the foot master so that we have the toes, the bottom of the foot as well um, to have all of those different pieces rotating that. And again, we'll adjust to have about the same pose. So it's the same game for every piece really. Uh, you have to, every time, take the bulk, adjust the different pieces and keep going just like that. We'll take the toes, rotate those, and reapply to the different pieces while ensuring that uh, the transition between both poses will be as smooth as possible. There we have it. So we still have our motion keyframes in between the two. It can be a good idea to every now and then go and deactivate that and look at how the transition is looking between the two poses. So that's looking pretty good. We have the rest of the torso here. We'll have the tail as well kind of popping out here. So we'll bring that, make sure that you're on the right frame and slide that over. We have practically the same position as before. And we have the crotch line over here, which we may want to make a little bit smaller, bring over on this side. And move over to recreate that line here. But don't be afraid to zoom in if you want to have exactly the same thing here. So we see that the line ends about here, so it might look a little bit off for what we want, but let's try it out this way first. And the leg, that's going to be positioned about here. So I'll let you guys readjust this one. Uh, we're not necessarily going to do all of that. Um, and of course over here, kind of seeing the bum here, which doesn't look so nice. So we probably want to uh, change that a little bit just so that it's hidden underneath the hand and make sure that it looks nice when the arm is raised up. And at this point, it could probably reactivate uh, my arms here and make sure that this one at the back is actually sliding towards the back of the body and we want to make sure as well that it's connecting properly to the other one so let's just go ahead and move those real quick to kind of have the same feel for the rest of the body and we could adjust a little more but i think you get the idea by now uh, of how to position these uh, in there. So once I start looking at it, you can see that the rotation is pretty smooth. There are, of course, certain issues uh, popping up when you have, for instance, the uh, the arm kind of popping in front. When we start keyframing and setting the breakdowns for these positions, uh, this is where we'll start fixing these different issues. So don't worry about it too much for now. We just really want to focus on creating those key poses. So you guys can go ahead and create the side view. I'm gonna give you a quick preview of uh, how it should be looking once you're done. If you're having any issues, please don't hesitate to uh, download the materials. Make sure that you have uh, the finished versions also so you can compare your work to what we have and not just the video. And I will see you guys in the next video.